welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to do an upwork automation so if you are a freelancer in upwork and if you want to get more job in upwork this automation is going to be for you or if you're just interested in how this automation works behind the scenes we're going to be automating everything from creating the job proposal to sending us an email of the daily job digest that's been submitted in upwork based on our search criteria that we provide so you're going to be needing an upwork account so we can fine tune the criteria that you have and then we can create an rss feed on that we're also going to need the ai table or air table or you know you can also use your google sheets if you don't have air an air table account that's totally fine as, as long as you can keep track of all the different jobs but i highly recommend something like Airtable or ai table for this as you can do some more advanced filtering for this automation scenario so essentially we're going to be building our prompts which we're going to be using the job description we're also going to be using the job title as well as our own job qualifications so that we can create a proposal that's specific to the job that we're applying for so i'm going to be showing you guys how to build that prompt and that's going to be part of this automation that we're going to be doing and also we're going to be keeping track of the jobs like i mentioned earlier we're going to be using a table in this automation so that's our way of keeping track of the jobs but we're also going to have some additional fields in there as well so that we can keep track of the jobs whether we already applied for it or already received an email based on that job posting so we're going to be keeping track of all that information inside a table and we're going to be marking it as we've sent that email in the custom fields that we've specified. So in the end, I'm going to be showing you guys the end result. So this is how the email is going to look like. Are you going to have the custom email that has the custom template? So it's going to have the email that digest and it's going to have the title of the email, including the job description. And there's going to be a link to click to on applying for it. So if there's multiple jobs that were posted on Upwork for that criteria that you specified, for that rss feed then you're going to get a couple of emails here so we're going to be building up these emails and then we're, that's going to be sent up to us on a daily basis or on a weekly basis so that's what i'm going to be doing today let's go back to my board mix here so also as far as the llm i've chosen cloud ai but i'm going to be showing you guys the different output that we get and that's what we're going to be providing our professional back background to create a proposal we're going to be using a table to hold and store our data so we're going to be using this to store our proposal the job title description and also we're going to be storing a couple of fields here this is going to be for internal purposes only whether we applied for a job or not it's going to be a checkbox so it's going to be a field for whether we apply for the job or not and also since we're sending an email digest we're also going to be keeping track of the jobs that were emailed to us so we're going to be tr keeping track of that through a checkbox field as well whether we do an email digest or a weekly digest this is just a way to make sure that we don't get the same jobs emailed to us multiple times so we're just going to keep track of it mark it and then we're going to be filtering it in our automation tool and lastly we're going to be sending an email notification to us via the automation so it's going to be daily or weekly or however you want to choose to to send this email i think a daily would be good because there's going to be a lot of jobs that's going to be accumulated over time inside a table in our storage so we're just going to keep this daily but it's totally up to you and how you want to set that up for your own needs so let's go ahead and take a look at the automation itself so there's going to be two flows that we're going to be building the central piece of this puzzle is going to be the where we're going to be storing it that's going to be used by our flow one and flow two so the first flow that we're going to be creating is going to be based on the rss feed that we're going to be creating in upwork so i'm going to be showing you guys how to where to find that rss feed through upwork so essentially when we build this tool any job that's been posted in upwork based on the set criteria that we have based on the filter we're going to get that job in activities and that's going to trigger that automation and from here we're going to be generating the job proposals using ai you can use any llm that you want open ai or perplexity it really depends on your preference at this point point. and then from here once the, the proposal has been created based on the job description and the title 
and our qualifications that a record is going to be added to the AI table here and that would include the job title description including the proposal that was created from step two and then it's also going to include the job URL which allows us to apply for the job if we want to if you want to build a UI for it later on and the applied is this internal way of to keep track of whether we applied for that job or not and then the email field is going to be for the email digest just to keep track of whether that email has been sent or not so we're going to be adding all that in inside a table and in flow 2 we're going to be creating a schedule here so this is where we can dictate when we want this digest to be sent to us through an email this is where we can configure this based on our preference once it gets triggered we're going to be finding all the jobs that were not email emailed to us based on the field I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a filter based on this field. So it's a little bit of filtering mechanics using formula in AI table. And that's how we're going to find the jobs that were not emailed to us. And then we're going to go through and loop through those jobs and we're going to compile those jobs. And then I'm going to be showing you guys how to create an email uh, template that we can use to make the email look nicer when we send those emails. And then lastly, we're going to be sending an email once we get that HTML and the job is compiled and bundled up as an email body. And then lastly, we're going to be sending an email and loop through the jobs again. And then we're going to be marking all those jobs that we just retrieved from the previous retrieval here from the second or the third step. We're going to be marking those ones as emailed so that we don't keep getting the same emails over and over again for the same um, job posting. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to be showing you guys quickly what's here in this board. I added some external links here for the stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys in this video. So this Upwork and this email template and also the uh, a sample RSS feed here. So which I'm going to be showing you guys in a little bit as well, how to build once we get to Upwork. So I'm going to be showing you guys how that works. So I'm going to be attaching this board mix. Stay tuned until the end of this video. I'm going to be giving you the link to the board mix. So this will include the active pieces template. And this will also include the diagrams that I hear as well as the prompt. So I'm going to be including and bundling all that together in this one board mix. So with that out of the way, let's get into the automation before we go any further in this video. So when you log into your Upwork account, it's going to show you guys how to get and create the um, RSS feed that we're going to be using for the automation tool. So when you go to your Upwork account, so let's say you log into your account. So you're going to be presented with a screen where you can find work. And from here, you can do a search for your work for whatever type of work you're looking for. In my case, I'm using .NET as an example. So I created a save search here, which I can use. So once you got the, the search fine tuned, you got the criteria already set. For instance, if you just want to get the intermediate type of position or expert level position, depending on how you want it to set this up and also the price range, you can go ahead and click on this RSS icon right here, which is on the top left on the screen and you can click on it and you're going to be showing this RSS or Atom right here. So you can get the RSS or Atom feed. We're going to be choosing the RSS feed. And then from here, it's going to open up a new window, which you'll see here. It will include the pagination and also the queue, which is like the query and also the sort, the recency, and then the location as well as some other stuff as well. And then there's also the security token, which is appended towards the end of the URL here. So we don't really need that. So we're going to remove anything after that. We can remove it. So if you hit enter, it's going to be doing the same thing. The RSS feed, I have an example in the board mix here. So I already have it here at the bottom. So you can play around with it and fine tune it to get the job query that you want. So once you get that, let's go ahead and move to AI table and, and set up the actual data sheet for our automation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the AI table data sheet here. So I already added a Upwork data sheet here. So if you want to add a data sheet on this plus icon right here, you can click on it and then you can do a new data sheet. I added a title, which is a single line text, a description, which is a long text so you can hold more information. So I chose long text here and then same thing for the proposal. So I have a long text here 
and for the job you are this is for the for the job posting itself so you can go straight there from here and then the date posted you can automatically pre-fill this information if you want but i chose to just do it from the automation side on active pieces but you can do it here too and do an auto fill here based on the current date as the job gets posted you can add the date anyway so date wise it doesn't really matter as long as we keep track of when the job was posted and like i previously mentioned i do have this two fields through here which is the applied and the emailed both are checkbox field type which is just a true or false. If you want to check this, you can just basically check that checkbox and it's going to give you this nice UI and you can change that to whatever icon that you want. And we can use this for your own purposes so you can determine whether you already applied for that job or not. For email purposes, the most important thing here that I added is the email field, which we're going to be using to filter the AI tables so we can filter out all the records that has been uh, sent to us uh, as an email already. So we, we don't get the same email twice about the same job posting. So this is going to be a true or false type of field. So that's going to be the makeup for that AA table. And just to kind of show you the data that we, we get or gets added into this AA table. So we get the title of the job. We also get the, the job description, which includes everything such as when it was posted, skills, and the actual link to where to apply to. So this is what we're going to be using to send an email that's going to be emailed to us when we compose the email for the body for the email when we get to that part. And then here you can see that the job proposal. So this is entirely generated by AI includes the person. If there's a hiring person involved in the description, the email will include that. So in this case, AI was able to figure out the actual person to email. It include the introduction, include the, the relevant experience and skills that we have. So when we provide our prompt, we include our skills and experience so that the AI can figure out which relevant parts of our experience can apply to this uh, job description. And also it include the proposed approach, what type of approach we're going to be doing to solve this issue that you're having. So you can find in this, you can kind of go through this and examine it and see if all of these you want to keep or you want to edit some parts of this. And then there's the benefits. What type of benefits are the clients going to get by working with us? And then in the end, there's the conclusion. I'm pretty excited about this opportunity to contribute to one of their success. So this is a company. So this is a bit of a personalized proposal here based on what it gathered from the job description. And then here, feel free to message me on Upwork to discuss the project Further, I look forward to the opportunity to learn more about your specific requirements and how I can best support this company growth success. And then here, best regards, and then you can input your name here. So you can tweak your prompt however you want if you want to pre-fill this with your personal information and contacts and whatever. So that's going to be how it looks like when we pre-fill this from Active Pieces. So that's the end goal. So before I switch and move on to the, the automation, I'm just going to quickly show you guys the different result that I got from when I was testing using multiple LLMs using the, the same prompt, right? So I created a template here in Straco. I generated a proposal for Upwork job. Basically, I specified the prompt that I'm using here for this job, right? And then I specified the description for it. And basically, I wanted to create based on my skill sets. I wanted to have exp my experience and skill sets and what my proposed approach is and benefits of the company based on the, the job description that they posted on Upwork. So all that information is going to be compiled and the um, the proposal is going to be generated for, for me based on that. I can even include uh, additional information such as my background, how many years of experience I have doing development or whatever skill sets I have so that the AI can best fit and cater this proposal based on my qualification and the job description. So I got this variable, the, the actual description and the title, and I put that here and insert it. And that compiles and create this prompt. I go ahead and discard that one. So I already created this ahead of time. So I picked um, Opus, um, uh, GPT-4 Turbo, a Gemini Pro 1.5 and Sonar. So I can take a look at which model will work best based on what I'm trying to achieve in my proposal. So far, I like the GPT-4 Turbo because it's a bit more structured as far as the section. It has the sections for experience and then some introduction and then proposed approach. 
But the Gemini Pro 1.5 is also pretty good. It has a section for experience and skill sets and also have a bullet list for all the things that they're looking for that matches my skill sets and then the proposed approach and the benefits for hiring me. So that's that for uh, the Gemini Pro 1.5. And as far as perplexity, this is what the result so it has the greetings on the top and experience and skills right here and then the proposed approach. So you can pick and choose which one. This is really a preferential at this point. I think GPT-4 has a pretty solid output based on what the prompt I provided. So I'm going to be choosing the GPT-4 for this one, but feel free to use whatever LLM you think would work best fit. Let's go into active leases and build the automation itself. So like I previously mentioned, once you've got the um, RSS feed, you can just copy that and we're going to be using that as the trigger for the RSS feed. So I added a new automation here, which has the RSS feed as a trigger. And then I provided the URL for the RSS feed here, which includes the query for .NET as that's the type of work that I usually I would probably go for if I would apply for jobs in Upwork. So I provided that here. It could be whatever you want. And then it has the sorting, which includes all the most recent jobs being on the top and some other parameters here. I think this is probably the location. So I'm going to be entering that here and then you're going to be clicking on load data. So once you get the data, the result is going to be the link to the job posting itself. If you scroll down to the bottom, you're also going to get the actual title of the job. They're also going to be including the summary, which is the job description and also what type of skill sets. So the summary and the description is the same. So essentially we're going to be using that information to feed into the AI so we, so we can create and generate the job proposal. So once we do that, we're going to move on to the next step. You can choose any type of LLM that you want. It could be Claude, Perplexity, or AI, or Open Router. This is really based on your preference at this point. So I'm including the prompt here, which is generate a prompt for the feed title freelance job based on the, the job description. This is straight up same prompt that I use in Straco that I have earlier. I'm going to be sharing all this template that I have here in this video. I'm going to be including that as far as the board mix. So I'm going to be including the, the job description as well. So you have a little bit of context as what the actual job is about. From here, I can even include some, some of my skills so that the AI can generate a proposal that will pretty much fit well with the job description so essentially i have that tweak based on the rss feed once i do a test here this is the output that i'm going to be getting and this is also based on the model of openai gpt4 so this is the output that i've got so my name is this and then a seasoned developer then includes the experience and skills and then my proposed approach so it's, this is quite a long proposal here you can scroll down to the bottom so once I get the proposal, I can go ahead and create the record in a table. So I added a step here, which is create record here in ActiveBesys. Once I select the action, I can pick the connection and also the space. I also pick the data sheet, which is in my case, is the Upwork. For the title, essentially I'm using the title that we, we received from the RSS feed. So you can go ahead and click on this one. So we're gonna be pick, picking the title. Same thing for the job description. Um, the job description would be either the summary or the actual description here. Both are totally fine. And then for the proposal, we're going to be picking the actual proposal that was generated from the previous step. In my case, I use Traco for generating the job proposal. So we're going to be picking that. And then for the job URL, the job URL is also in the RSS feed link here. So I'm going to be picking that in the feed date, which is the date posted here. So yeah, so that's going to be that. And then obviously I have the applied and emailed here. Those are the fields that I'm not going to be checking off. And then once I get that, and this is pretty much the first automation, and then we can move on to the next one. So don't forget to, to publish it to make sure that any new feeds that comes into that RSS gets added to this AI table. So this is going to be part of, the, uh, part of the first step in the automation process. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second flow uh, for the automation. So this is the part of the automation where we're going to be sending an email once it's, it's stored in a, uh, AI table. So once we get all the records and the jobs and the proposals, 
added to AA table, this is the part where we can send an email. So we can change this to be on a daily basis or however we want. We can even do every month or daily or weekly. This is where we're going to be changing that. I added a new flow here. I'm using the scheduled trigger to trigger this automation. I'm setting it to my own time zone here. You can pick whatever time zone you have and that's, that's, what, that's when the email is going to be sent. So the next step is going to be to go to AI table here. So this is the part we're going to be doing a, a filtering based on the column that we specified here. So if you can remember, based on this, I added this emailed uh, column here, which is a checkbox, which is basically a true or false type of uh, field. So it's either a true or false. So right now everything is turned off and it's set to false. If I do set this to check, this is going to be set to true and it's going to be set to one behind the scenes. Let's go back to active pieces here. So I'm going to be adding a step here, which is going to be the action for find records. This is going to be the option that we're picking. We're going to be picking the connection and then also the space and also the data sheet. So once I got that all in place, we're going to be scrolling down all the way to the bottom and we're going to be specifying the field that we want to filter on. So in our case, since we named our field, emailed, we're going to be wrapping that into a curly braces. And then we're going to be doing an equals symbol. And then we're going to be specifying here that we want the false, anything that has these email that's set to false. So if you want to set this based on the true, if you run this one, we're not going to get anything, right? Because all our records in Upwork or in this uh, data sheet is set uh, to false, right? So if we go back to active pieces and change it back, to zero and we run this again you can see here that we're getting a total of 20 right so if i change this so i have 20 records here if i do check one of these off or two two of these off right i set this at email to true for two of these i should only get 18 when i run this the next time right since i'm only looking for the ones that are emailed is false so here you can see that the total is 18 since i marked those two as true in a checkbox so that's how the filtering mechanic works for a table and that's how we're going to get all the records so essentially we put all down the records and then we're doing some filtering based on this filter and then from here we're going to be grabbing the actual data total and we're going to be specifying if there's any emails to send right so we're going to be checking against that data total so i can remove that and and drill down to the actual step and then we're going to go to data and then the total so essentially i'm just doing a condition here where i'm specifying if this number is greater than zero then there is a job to be sent so if there's none then we're going to be skipping this step this step so in this case if it's true we're going to go fall into the true part of the branch where we're going to be proceeding and sending the email so we scroll down and scroll through this automation I'm adding this step right here because I'm going to be storing and aggregating all my actual uh, jobs as part of the storage. So for testing purposes, I'm actually clearing the, the jobs. This is the key that I'm using for the storage. And this is set for a scope. So this step is not really necessary, but when I'm doing a testing uh, on this flow, I want to make sure that everything on the storage for this spe specific key is cleared and I don't want to have all the jobs get stays in there. Okay, once I get finished on that, I'm going to be looping through all the jobs. I'm setting the actual items in the in the jobs as part of this records that we received here. So I'm going to be specifying this in the loop on jobs. This is array right here. And we're going to be iterating through this jobs here. Okay, so for each loop, we're going to be adding and appending the jobs as part of this jobs key. Right, and this is going to be a storage scope of flow, and we're not adding a separator here. So before we get into actual building these jobs, I'm going to be showing you guys how to compile and, and create your custom email that, that you can use in active pieces. So I've set up a JS fiddle here, so where I can play around and see how my email is going to look like. You can see it's similar to what I have here when I send this email. So what we want is a header like this. And we want each job to have a title like this, like a bold title. And then we're going to have the job description as part of that. And then it's going to repeat for each job, basically. 
So that's essentially my end goal here. And this is what the, the template that I came up with. So when you're building this template that you want to use in an automation setting, such as active pieces, uh, you want to use and, and compile this first and preview it. I can set up the markers where I want things to be, such as you know, the Upwork, right? The title here, I can run this. And where I want things to be, I've changed the title to be this curly braces so that I can easily see it when I, it's time for me to replace that in active pieces. And also in description, this is where the actual description is going to be. And before you plug it into active pieces, you have to figure out which part of the actual template is repeating. In our case, I figured that the LI right here is where the jobs is going to be. So if I copy this LI multiple times, you're going to see here that the title and the description is going to be repeating across the entire body of that email. So that's going to be my template. So that's going to be what I'm aiming for. We're going to be extracting this piece right here, which is the LI, which is what we're repeating as part of this email template. So we're going to go ahead and paste that as part of this automation. So I've pasted the LI here, same thing that we do have in the previous one. And you notice that where the sections are for the title, I included it here inside of the H2. And as far as the body itself, I included it as part of the div here, which is after the H2. So it's kind of the same thing that we had previously where the title here and then the div section here is going to be replaced by that title and the description. And we're using the item as part of this loop on jobs array. So we're going through it and we're grabbing the feed title and the actual description. So the same thing that we queried here when we do a query on a table. When we run this one, is this going to be appended to this key in the storage? And it's going to be added once we finish and accumulated all these jobs, we're going to have a list of allies in this. I know that there's a little bit of HTML involved in this, so just kind of bear with me. This template is going to be included as part of the board mix in the end. So you don't have to worry about all these templating stuff, but just, just to understand that the ally is pretty much going to be a list and it's going to be repeated and it's going to be accumulated. It's going to be appended to this storage with this key of jobs. And then once we finish and accumulate all those jobs, we're going to be retrieving it here, which will include all the jobs with the LI here. So if you have multiple jobs, then you're going to have multiple LIs here. So that's that for the actual jobs content. As far as the body of the email, right? So without this LI right here, this is the actual jobs. And then the actual email is composed of the rest of the actual HTML content here. So what I did here was essentially I provide an ID to this to this ul and i just put content on this one and i basically remove the li so at a minimum when we run this one we're not going to have anything so this is the bo actual body of the html template and then before we use it in the automation itself we want to minify this as right now anything that we have here such as the line breaks is going to be replaced by breaks in the html which we don't want so we want to compress this and remove as much space as possible before using this and adding it to our automation. So I kind of show you a little bit how that works. So I added a code a step here, which basically just renders and returns the HTML body of this uh, HTML template. So you can see here, this is the actual HTML, which is being returned from this function. So essentially I removed and stripped out all the line breaks in spaces. And I added an ID of content here where the actual list of jobs is going to be added and inserted. I'm going to be explaining this, how it works later on once we compile all that HTML elements. But just to kind of keep in mind right now that I specified an ID of content here where we were going to be placing the actual allies in this ULs attacks. So once we retrieve all that, we're just basically re retesting it and we're going to get the HTML. So this is a basic HTML, same thing as what we receive here in uh, JS Fiddle. I know that there's um, tons of tools out there that would minify this and strip out the line breaks and spaces, but you can also use AI. You can use Vala and and strip out the the line breaks. So can you minify this HTML? Just like that. I do have a minified HTML here that I can just use and copy. So. So that's that for the actual HTML part. And that's what I'm returning here. 
the reason why I'm using a code here is so I can easily visually see what I'm building and I can use this across the different parts of the actual automation flow. So once I get the actual body of the HTML template, I can use that for the other parts. So the next thing here, like I mentioned earlier, this is the actual the accumulation of each LIs and the jobs, HTML fragments. So this is going to be where I'm going to be retrieving that from the storage. So I'm just, once I've appended all that HTML tags into the actual storage based on this key, right? I got all that jobs in here now. So now the next step is to actually use another code, which I'm going to be using Cheerio library to actually put this together. So I'm going to be feeding it the content, which is the accumulated jobs content and the actual HTML body, which is what holds all those content and the jobs in place. So I'm going to open this up and those two are going to be part of the parameter. I added a Cheerio dependency here from NPM and I'm importing it from the top. So essentially here, I'm referencing the HTML body and the content, which is the parameter that were passed in into this code. And then I'm loading the entire HTML body as part of this Cheerio. So it's going to be assigned to this dollar sign, which basically would have all the HTML included in there, right? Remember earlier that I've put an ID of content for that UL. So this is where I'm just identifying that content and I'm pending everything from the content for all the LIs is going to be appended inside of that content. So once the content is in the actual ID or an order list, it's going to be appended in there and then I'm returning the entire HTML. I hope that makes sense. So once I do a rate test on this one, I'm returning the HTML, which includes the, let's go ahead and expand this one. You can see a little bit better. So you can see the HTML body, which includes the actual description and the different jobs in, inside of that un unordered list tag. So once you get the H actual HTML, then it's time to, to send an email, right? So I chose Gmail here. I'm going sen to be sending to this email address. I'm basically just putting Upwork Digest and then I'm choosing the body type to be HTML. And then the body itself, I'm going to be specifying the code, basically, which includes the HTML itself as part of this body. And I can put anything that I want on this one and, and test it. So I got that in place. Once I send out an email, I'm going to go ahead and loop through again all the records that I retrieved from step two, right? So I'm going to loop through all the different fields again from AI table and make sure that this one goes after sending the email. So if send email uh, step fails, then it's not going to go and mark the jobs as completed or emailed in my case. So it's going to go and loop through all the emails again or the jobs again, and it's going to update each record to set for the, for each record ID. Um, I'm going to be specifying the email as set. See here, you can toggle the switch here. So this is a checkbox that you set. So we're only updating this email field, which if you go back to Upwork, it's going to mark this as email as true here. So once that's done, you can see here, that's pretty much the final step in the automation itself. Let's go back to Upwork here. You can see here that marked to as emailed. Let's go ahead and test that flow by, by going up on the top of this automation and doing a test flow here. So you can see this in action. And let's flip back to a table here. You can see here that as soon as the email are sent or finished sending, each record here is going to be marked as emailed in real time. All right, so you can see here in real time, and then it's marking each one as emailed here. You can see here it's being updated in real time. And I think at this point, we should have received an email already. So we got an email here, right, with all the jobs that we've set in AI table. So first one here is AI chat. Scroll down, you have a front and back developer, CTO Upwork, transport and then Upwork here. So basically all the jobs that was an AI table here. So see here, that's all completed. So if you do exit this automation run and, and do a test flow here again, you can see that it actually executed, but it didn't proceed past step three as we don't have any more new jobs that were posted that were marked as unchecked for email. So that's that for the automation today. So if you have any suggestions or feedback based on, on this video, if you want to see 
any type of automation video or any kind of video from me in the future, please go ahead and leave in the comments. Um, please like, subscribe and share uh, this video. And that's it. I hope to see you guys on the next video.